welcome to episode three of our deep dive podcast, where we deep dive into the sermon from last Sunday. Um, Life is better connected. The dangers of AI was the sermon. And I have with me Pastor Shannon Wooten of New Spring Church. And we're going to discuss, we're going to deep dive a little bit about uh, what the sermon is about. How you doing, Pastor? Hey, Paul. Doing well. Good to see everyone. Glad everyone is joining us uh, in this discussion. Yeah. Good to be here. Awesome. So, you know, on, on the surface, it seems like we this is, seems to be a, a, a different type of sermon than what we've been getting lately, but it mm-hmm. is uh, connected to Life is Better Connected with the Dangers of Artificial Intelligence or AI. Yeah. Um, I'm just curious, what? Uh, tell me how you came up with this for the sermon. You had talked about talking with some other pastors, and I'd like to hear that. Yeah, I you know, Tuesdays, normally... Um, when God gives me a, a series uh, to give to, to present to our congregation, uh, I, I do some studying and I, I don't know from necessarily week from week um, specifics of the sermon. So I usually take uh, Tuesdays uh, of that week and pray over the message, uh, get a sense of prompting from God, what I believe for either reading a scripture or God just prompting my thoughts through prayer that's normally my routine. And Tuesdays, I will just spend some time uh, studying, researching that that uh, the sermon for that Sunday. Usually, that will bleed over into Wednesday, and then uh, try to finalize by Thursday. And then I'm able to kind of pray over the the message for the remaining of you know Friday and Saturday as we get ready for Sunday. That's normal my routine. But this this Tuesday, as I just didn't have. I had two directions that I could go in, and I started down the path of, of praying and building this sermon or creating the sermon, and I just did not feel, I did not feel locked in on it. I just felt like there was something I was missing. And then Wednesday, I had a meeting with some local pastors, um, and out of the, our conversation about um, artificial intelligence, that is a trending thing right now. A, a lot is in the news. You see that. Uh, but out of that conversation and what our theology, the question was, what is our theology? What is What do we believe? And do we feel some responsibility to bring to our congregation and inform us about AI? How does it connect? How does it fit into the maybe eschatology, the end times? Um, how is it going to relate to us as a society? What challenges are we going to have as believers? And as we were talking and discussing, man, I really felt God nudging me that this was the lane. This is where I was supposed to go and connecting life is better connected we've been talking about building healthy relationships that this is what god has designed us for and i see that technology artificial intelligence uh, some of the things that we're struggling with as a society some of it's good i'm not against it but i do see some dangers and i saw this that wow we need to pay attention to this because it's not just about the direct ai or a robot or a, 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 G, uh, a chat chat bot it's what's happening. It's what's happening behind it. Um, it's what's happening to our emotions and our influence and deception. All of this is connecting to this part of our life. And then it's, it's, it's impacting how we relate to one another. And so I see this. And so Paul, that's how I kind of landed what I felt like God nudged me to talk about this. So, and it's funny, Paul, because uh, one of our members (laughs) right after the service sent me a couple of photos of the Dayton Daily News uh, on the front newspaper on Sunday morning, and it was right next to the king uh, uh, about AI and some of the things that were going on, some of the things that were trending in the news about AI. So it was like, she was like, wow, this is right on topic. This is right on point. So that's where we're at, Paul. And I think there's much to that we need to study, that we need to know about this. And... Um, and we need to be thinking about, not just in fear, but be thinking about how does this impact us and what are where, where should we be cautioned? How do we educate ourselves? And uh, most importantly, um, what, what does the Bible say about, not necessarily about AI, about technology, but the reasoning behind it and how is it going to impact us as believers and as uh, humans is in our society and our relationships. So that's kind of how, um, how we kind of landed there, Paul. It's amazing how that is 
connected with our series too, because life is better connected. It seems yeah. like AI could be the opposite of not connecting us. And I just want to remind everybody that um, we're not live right now because of a schedule conflict. The, there's a group going with pastor going down to uh, uh, Puerto Rico, Puerto Rico. Thank you. Yeah. yeah and they're having sure. a, a going away party tonight. And um, so we wanted to schedule this this morning that you can still leave your comments and uh, we'll we'd certainly get to them on the next episode or you can talk to pastor, but we'll look at your comments and we'll, we'll go over a few from the next episode. Cause I'm sure there'll be quite a few on this one. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So let's talk about first, what is artificial intelligence? Because I think a lot of people might confuse that with, you know, just technology in general. Um, mm -hmm. What does that mean by intelligence that's artificial? Why is that such a big thing right now? Yeah, well, you got the chat GPT that's developing. Now there's a different version coming. I think that you can you can research this on YouTube and there's all kinds of information of how G GPT-5 is coming out and what advancements are going to be made with GPT-5. So it's software, it is robotic, it is uh, software that has now developed some form of intelligence that looks like it's developing on its own, it's creating its own, it's learning on its own. And we gave several articles on Sunday, um, which, you know, concerns. And anytime, <laughs> anytime an engineer who created something is concerned about what he created or he, they created, it should grab our attention. We should know this. Like we should know like, okay, if the godfather of AI is concerned and he resigned and now he wants to focus on making sure there's safeguards put in place. So AI, yeah. Artificial intelligence. Um, it can be a, a, a chat bot that's, that is holding a conversation with you or research. A lot of this was created for research in the medical field. Honestly, Paul, it's, it's all over. It's in every field. Uh, every career, every job, anything in life, they have created something to help us research, learn, discover. And uh, so that's where it is increasing in knowledge, uh, which which kind of grabbed our attention, right? Because we realize that that is one of the signs of the end time is that knowledge will increase. And here we are seeing through AI this great fulfillment of prophecy in our in our time frame. Yeah, and it's interesting because AI is machine learning. It's not, we're not just putting things into a machine that's coming mm -hmm. from humans like we're, you know, we're used to. And then the machine just mimics what we're saying. The machine is actually learning from itself and other machines. So yeah. the the internet obviously is helping that because these, the machine is grabbing information from supercomputers all over the world and, and create and learning. And so yeah. it, I, I think you had some examples of where it could learn a language and you know, they don't know how it did. Incredible. Yeah, it, yeah, so it's own. grabbing, it's, it's taking, receiving information from different places. That's not, it's not programmed to learn Swahili or Persian, but because of the information that has been inputted from random places, it has learned on its own how to collect that information and then process it in a way to where now it can speak fluent, a fluent language that it was not programmed, uh, programmed to, to speak. So that is kind of giving us the insight of, of how artificial intelligence is learning on its own, uh, which it's raising concerns, uh, for us who really don't understand that. I don't know a lot about I, I do have an electronic engineer degree, but it's very, very basic. I, I program robots with basic language, gosh, man, th 20 years ago and barely could move. An, I got, I wrote the program for it to move an arm over to the right to, and to the left and pick up something. That was it. That's all I could do. So I have very, very basic understanding of this, but I, I do understand when, what they're talking about and um, when they are concerned about how it's, increasing in knowledge and how, what are the dangers? Then I think we should be paying attention and thinking about how is it, how is it impeding our relationships? What are the dangers there? How are we going to impact? How will it impact us as a society? And then I want us to think Paul as believers, what new um, beliefs are being formed even about, uh, is it about God creator God? And about us as humans being created in the image of God, 
is it lessening that? Is it is it causing that us to lose uh, a foundational and a fundamental belief? Uh, so it, is it shifting? And I, I, I see this. I see it happening. So those are kind of some of the, uh, we said that God created humans for connection and Satan from the beginning is constantly trying to break down and distort that connection. And again, I'm, we're bringing the awareness that this technology, there are a lot of good that can be done with it. And I, I made the statement on Sunday. I think if they keep it within a certain framework, uh, keep it within a certain boundaries, then I think, man, a lot of good can be done uh, in the medical field, uh, maybe even our careers to help us. But if we just, if we don't, if we throw caution to the wind and there are no boundaries and there are no um, things in place that protect us as humans, uh, then I th I see great danger to this. Well, here's the problem. Um, there's not that many people that are in the AI game. It's down to a, you know, a handful of, uh, really advanced, you know, oh, yeah. high -tech. scientific engineers and who sets the policy. <laughs> and some of those companies are in control of a lot of information. Absolutely. And some of them have been caught deceiving and lying and manipulating. So gosh, if these guys are behind that, we, we need to be very careful. Um, yeah. and you have engineers and I gave you a couple of quotes from Elon Musk and some others mm -hmm. that even his concern is, is that people are believing these chat bots that are giving them research and misinformation was one of his biggest concerns. Another thing that people don't realize is how fast this is happening. Cause I remember right. talking about this maybe five, six years ago and they said, Oh, probably not in your lifetime or maybe not even your children's, but your grandchildren, mm -hmm. you know, you'll be able to mimic uh, human beings, their face. We've seen this already, you know, with deep fakes. I mean, they look real. Um, yeah. Yeah. I was, I was just, uh, uh, looking, researching a training video. And I came across a website where there was a, basically a, a you could select your characters and you could just type in your text and it would speak. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it looked as, as real as, I mean, you had to know it wasn't real to know. Yeah. It wasn't real. <laughs> yeah. And, I mean, you know, I caught it eventually, but it was like, it's that close. And it, you had a, this is interesting. This, um, uh, this knowledge curve. And, and I, I want to get into the, you know, what mm -hmm. we want to get it, but I want people to kind of be aware that this is serious. I mean, this is, if you look at, you know, from how quickly this knowledge curve is obviously coming from, um, machine learning, you know, um, yes. it's quadrupling, yeah. you know, every, what is it? I can't, every 12 hours, 12 hours, <laughs> every 12 hours, knowledge is doubling every 12 hours. And that's when I, so in 2000, IBM was one that predicted that it would be doubling every 12 hours. So in 2000, that wasn't happening, but it, but now, I mean, just, just this past month, um, they have confirmed that through like uh, chat GPT, that's only one. And there's a couple of other, uh, chat bots, uh, research bots that are, are doubling its information and doubling its ability to learn. Uh, every 12 hours. And what if it's going to be beyond that? It's going to get to, a, it's going to keep accelerating. And this is a huge fulfillment of prophecy right before our eyes and right in our lifetime. This is a fulfillment of prophecy uh, for uh, the end times. And when we say end times, it means uh, God, listen, here's what it means. God has a next chapter. God has had an agenda since he created Adam and Eve. Uh, he has had an agenda all through history of mankind. And that was to redeem man uh, to back to him. And we see this through uh, Adam and Eve, through a family, through a nation. Uh, and God is bringing us Jesus Christ. We see this in the New Testament to be the savior of mankind, our Messiah. Mm -hmm. uh, it is the great love redemption story, the great redemption of love story where God is trying to redeem humanity. But there's also an opposing force, Satan. He was, a, he was an angel and remember who he was. He was an angel created by God and he was to worship God and, and to lead the angels of heaven to, to bring worship and glory to God. But he was deceived by pride and his deception has been a big part of his plan from the very beginning, from, from the garden. We see it in Genesis chapter three, mm -hmm. he tells Eve, God knows that if you eat this fruit, you will become like him. Don't miss that. Well, that 
that right there, that in in, uh, intent, that aspiration, well, you can follow it all through history from the Tower of Babel and even today. I'm telling you, there's a big part. Listen to what some of these guys that are not Christ followers, that are not believers, they don't have a moral compass. Listen to what their intent is for what for the technology that they're creating, whether it's AI, chat robot. I mean, they want, they want, uh, and they probably don't even know it. Um, they want what Satan wanted. And it is, I want to be God-like. I want to mm. be God-like, which is, that aspiration is wrong. It's not biblical. And mm. so, yeah, this, this knowledge is going to continue to increase, going to continue to double. It may be get down to where, Knowledge can increase every every minute. Uh, can double every minute. I I don't know where the, where does it stop. Uh, the Tower of Babel. God had to stop Tower of Babel. God I, had to come down and stop the Tower of Babel. I and I feel like are we reaching as a society in our time frame has technology and knowledge and the aspirations of men uh, who are not following God. Is it to a point to where God is going to have to come down and, and stop it again? Or is it leading to the end time? Is this going to be where it'll launch us into the seven years of tribulation and um, the battle of Armageddon where the kings of the East, Russia and China, uh, come yeah. do battle in Maged in the Valley of Megiddo. Um, that, that's in the Bible, guys. That's Ezekiel. Yeah. That's Daniel. That's Revelation. You can read this. Uh, it's, it's, it's very real. It's going to happen. And I think uh, fooling the elect, how is that possible? You know, that, you know, obviously we're already aware of this as Christians, you know, we're yeah. talking about it. How could we be fooled? Right. And yeah. um, I found this website. I was kind of doing a little research before we did this. And I was like, I wonder if there's any Christians that are buying into, you know, wanting to exp expedite this artificial intelligence. And, um, and I found this side right here. Um, it's basically a group, more of a humanist than they are um, Christian, but they they call themselves Christians, mm. and they're you know they they they're composed of mainstream religions, Presbyterians. You know, there's it's several other groups that are there. They have a statement of faith. It's almost like a a cult in a way, but they 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 candy coat it. They brand it uh, where they believe that. And it takes a little reading to get into it because mm -hmm. on, on the surface, it looks like, hey, these are just Christians that think we need to be a part of society controlling artificial intelligence so that it doesn't go wicked. Right. Mm -hmm. So on the surface, that sounds like, hey, that's a good answer. We should get, you know, I would probably say, yeah, we should join, you know, it's because that's what we're talking about. Right. Mm -hmm. But as we talk, as I deep, you know, dived into this thing. I saw that their motive was a little bit different and the, in their statement of faith and some of the blog stuff that they put on there, they're talking, they believe that God somehow has left it to humans to recreate the planet so that we would have, you know, the, the, the new Jerusalem on earth. And that there would, if you look at that, there is no end times that we will live forever. So they, they believe in cyber cyanics. I can't remember. I don't know how to pronounce it. But. Yeah. Um, where, you know, where you, you free someone and you live forever. Um, they believe in researching that they really try to push it, that this is God's will that we as humans should do everything we can to, to save the planet, you mm -hmm. know, so that we're, it's renewed, uh, that human beings are renewed, their minds are renewed. Mm -hmm. Um, so, you know, so on the surface, scientific discoveries, like, you know, that we could do with artificial intelligence, you know, machine learning would be, you know, creating, you know, um, cures for diseases or, mm. or you know, uh, artificial organs and things like that, that a machine could learn to do faster than we can. Mm -hmm. sounds great on the surface. Right. The goal is not to glorify God. It's a humanist intent and they're yeah, we want to, immortality. We want to live forever. Yeah. And well, that's not glorifying God. That's no, glorifying ourselves. Yes. And that's satanic. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Perfect, Paul. That's a perfect example. I have not looked at that website yet, but I'd like to. But yeah. um, um, but that that is a perfect example of what you're bringing to our attention of the deception. We are living in the age of deception. There's no doubt about it. Yes. Deceptions and lies. It's there. We. This is the day that we're living in. And Jesus predicted. Predicted this. This is part of uh, prophecy being fulfilled. 
And this is a great example of how you can, if you're not, if you're not rooted and grounded and know the word of God and know God, who God is, we can be, even Jesus said in this time frame, even the very elect, the very elect is going to be deceived, can be deceived. That people who believed in God because they're in what would what would be um a cause for the elect, God's people to be, and that's what he means, right? God's people, even the very elect will be deceived. What does he mean by that? What could cause that? Well, I believe uh, what Jesus said, many will stand before me in judgment. And he says, um, depart from me. I never knew you. And they're going to say, did we not cast out devils? Did we not heal the sick? That sounds like the elect. That sounds like God people. But he's going to say to you, depart from me. I never knew you. That's scary. Why is that? Because they didn't know God. They didn't really truly know. They didn't keep their heart in line with the character of God and what God, what does God want? And if you can be enamored and amazed and awed by technology to the point to where you can put your beliefs and the character of God aside and gravitate to something that where the aspiration is not only do we want to heal Parkinson's, that's great. I think God gave uh, doctors and smart people medicine to help us while we're on this earth. But when it, when it begins to cross over into, we want to be immor immortal. We want to, we want to be wiser than God. We want to create human beings like God created human beings. That that is deception, and we need to understand like, okay, what is good, and then what is what seems to be good that's crossing over to this deception, and this is the age that we're living in of the great deception. And part of how what how you can know and to discern is knowing the aspiration. What is the intent behind what we're creating and what we're trying to accomplish? And if you dive deep, like Paul, what you just did, you'll start seeing that it's the same temptation that, that Satan showed himself in the garden with Eve. You will become like God. It's the mm -hmm. same temptation of the Tower of Babel. Hey, let's build this tower and let's reach the heavens. Let's reach God. Uh, it's the same temptation that Satan still wants today, and that is... He doesn't want you to believe God. He doesn't want you to believe that God is the creator of the universe. He wants you to devalue creation as humans that uh, we have been created in the image of God. And Satan wants to distort that. In the book of Genesis, we don't have to go deep right now with this. And some of you may have questions on this and we can come back later and do a, maybe a segment on this. In Genesis... Uh, we see where, again, Satan has this desire to become like God. I want to create like God creates, that demons were walking on the earth and had and was uh, procreating with uh, humans, the sons, uh, the daughters of men, um, having children with, um, with demons. And that may sound so weird and so off the wall, but go back and read the Bible but if you look at this, that God even told Joshua, he says, these three tribes, I want you to wipe out. Now, it, it, for New Testament Christians, like this is not, this seems really crazy. Why would God ask Joshua to wipe out three different, uh, three different tribes? Well, those tribes were infiltrated with what they were called Nephilim, which was a transhuman. Uh, it was demons and humans having children that were transhumans. It was a mixed breed. They were not pure humans. Think about what's happening today, uh, that we are trying to mix um, artificial intelligence with human life. Where does this cross over from trying to heal Parkinson's to where now we're trying to recreate creation itself and transhumans? Uh, this, is, this may seem really off the wall, Paul, but I'm telling you, this is a fulfillment of prophecy. And you can go back. I'm going to give you a reference, guys. Uh, Dr. Chuck Missler, I've, I've listened to him a number of times over the years. He's passed away now. Dr. Chuck uh, Missler, uh, brilliant man. He was actually in with, I believe he was on staff with Ronald Reagan as one of the directors of uh, uh, technology. I don't remember what department he was over as a director. Brilliant man, but he was also a believer and a theologian. 
and you can search him, Dr. Chuck Missler, search him on YouTube. He has incredible studies on all of this. He'll take you through Genesis to Revelation. And he's the type of guy where I had to go back, Paul, and listen to listen to his message about 10 times before I could grab grab what he was saying. But he has a whole study on transhumanism. Now, he passed away uh, about 10 years ago, but he was in the 90s. He was talking about uh, genetics, transhumanism, of uh, how we are trying to recreate life, trying to live to be immortal, and how wh- how that was dangerous, and how it was a fulfillment of prophecy. If you look at Psalms eighty three, that whole chapter, uh, he believed, and I and I believe this too, was a prelude to Ezekiel chapter thirty eight and thirty nine, that talks about the Antichrist, this man coming on the scene in the end times, um, that. We see this anticipated leader uh, exploiting this global crisis to set him up as a leader. But how is he going to be so brilliant? How is he going to be smart? Uh, could it be that he will be a uh, that he will use AI? Will he use some of this genetic uh, to put himself in that position? It's very very possible. Uh, so we are. I'm just saying we are we are plunged right now in this time period of the end. I mean, we're in it. We're right yeah. in the middle of this, <laughs> and it goes back to where God was trying to wipe out the Nephilim. Now, Chuck Missler believes that the Nephilim will rise again. These transhumanism. He believes he believes that it could be through AI, uh, through the cyborgs. Uh, it could be also through. Uh, he believes even aliens that that aliens will present themselves to and there will be that will be in our society. Um I don't know where I land on all of that, but I do believe there's there is something there that is going to take place and our society is going to be able to say in our probably in our lifetime. And if not in our lifetime, I'm telling you our children, our grandchildren are going to see if if knowledge is doubling. I was going to say looking at that chart, it may be quicker than you think. <laughs> that's that's what I'm saying. That's the awareness that we're bringing, you know? Yeah. So, I mean, we're looking at, I mean, the, even that chart was created by probably humans with their, yeah. you know, a, a machines going, what are you talking about? I can, <laughs> I can yeah. triple that in a second, in a millisecond. And and um, before you dismiss this guys, think about this. Now, Chuck Missler brought this, this, his research, this was back in the nineties that scientists at uh, Salk Institute in San Diego, they were engineering mice uh, that possessed uh, a small percentage of the human brain cells. <laughs> mm. They were able to inject them with brain cells and, with the cell technology, and now they were birthing other mice and birth mice with both human and rodent brain cells back in the 90s. The oh, wi- Wiseman of Sanford uh, University injected human neural c- cells, stem cells, and produced the first mice with nearly a complete human uh, immune system. A complete human immune system. Guys, this was back in the 90s. Look at look at where we're at today. And uh, this is some of the things that, was bringing, that he was bringing to our attention back then. That, hey, transhumanism is happening. The whole idea of us playing with genetics and creating animals, cloning them. You know, we heard these articles way back when, uh, 20, 30 years ago, and who knows what they were working on behind the scenes. Uh, and now look at us advancing forward and with knowledge doubling every 14 hours, 12 hours, 14 hours, what what more will we see in our society? Are we going to be able to stop it? Maybe not. I don't know. It depends on what you what you think. But I think God wants us to do everything we can to be aware, right? I mean, yeah. To, Absolutely. to understand what's going on so that we have a sense of urgency. Yeah, I think like Elon people. Musk, yeah. <laughs> you're right, Paul. And Elon Musk even in an interview said, you know, we need to pull the plug, but he says we can't. Because hmm. even if the United States says, you know what, we're not going to mess with yeah. creating uh, AI As of ethical reasons. Yeah. <laughs> because other nations will continue. We They will over, they will, they would, who, God knows what they will create that will take over the entire world with this type of technology, he sure. says, we can't, we can't abandon it, but we better find ways to put safeguards yeah. uh, and around it. And, and again, I don't know if Elon Musk is a believer or not. I don't really don't know. I feel like he's got some, uh, he does have a moral compass. that feels like that. And I, I pray that he, I, I pray that he will be a believer if he's not. Because yeah, absolutely. You know, but I, 
and I appreciate these guys having it looks like a moral compass. You know, they do care for humans. They're putting human beings uh, priority above technology and uh, saying we we got to protect our society. We have to protect our uh, as as humans. We need to protect that. We are the most precious gift in this world that God has created. We are created in the image of God. Hmm. And uh, we we are to be priority. We are to honor and respect because a, 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 the God of the universe created us. And uh, we that needs to be respected and honored. Um, all human life, all human life is above every, uh, every other species. Right. Um, and the transhumanist doesn't believe that. They believe that um, all the species are equal. <laughs> yeah, I, that's not your. I'm telling you, read your Bible. That's not biblical, right? And that's where the deception, the age of deception, from the very beginning, uh, that that he wants to distort this, uh, these beliefs and uh, foundational truths that connect us to God. The heart of us is not to just say that we're we're smart on prophecy or eschatology. The heart of this is to prepare us to receive Jesus. He's coming back. He's coming soon. And that's the whole heart of this. And I think there's a danger that we can get sucked into the rabbit hole here, guys, so to speak. If all we're doing is trying to find out all about AI, <laughs> I'm trying to find out all the latest technology and what, what are the dangers. And if all I'm doing is warning people about uh, artificial intelligence and the dangers of that, and I fail to communicate to us and whet our appetite and entice us and get our attention to focus on Jesus is returning soon. He's coming back. And um, if we fail to do that, we have failed. We, we have missed the whole reason why we should be alarmed or concerned. Does that make sense, Paul? Totally. I hope totally that makes sense to you, to you guys that are listening um, that don't forget <laughs> revelation was a revelation about Jesus, not just the end times. Jesus is returning. He's coming soon and what he's done for us. A lot of people miss revelation. They get caught up on all the years and the seals that are broken and the wrath that's being poured out and, and plagues and all of that. And they miss the whole revelation was written to reveal Jesus. We can be fascinated with technology. I love technology. That's, I mean, I, I use technology every day in my job and absolutely yeah. we're doing it right now. Like you said, we don't want to worship the creation. We worship the creator. So that's right. We don't want to worship. We're, we're, we're the creation. We don't worship ourselves. Right. We worship the the creator that created us. And we don't, um, we don't want to get hung up too much on the fascination of technology and where it's going and all this and how it can just change the world. That's what I think this website that I found these Christians were, well, Hey, it's, we're not going to stop it. So let's join them. You know, and mm. it's kind of like, um, you know, it sounds good on the surface. Like, yeah, you know, it's good for science and, you know, mm. health and all these things. And, um, we can, but they're not going to stop what's already in Revelation. <laughs> Absolutely, Paul. And let me let me give you an example. Yeah, of how we can not be deceived, and how can we walk in not deception. So that example, what you just shared with me from that website, that that group, based on what you just told me, that their goal is to um, usher in. What did you say? Um, to live forever. So is it immortality? They want, they believe. Yeah, that's that, part of their belief. Immortality so believe, of their selves, the planet. Um, so there will be this. a recreated earth. It, so it'll be imme their job. Yeah. Immediately, immediately when you told me that, I thought, okay, well, that doesn't line up with the Bible. That's exactly where my mind went to. You know why? Because the Bible says we're not going to accomplish immortality uh, through, through technology, through genetics, that not in us, it's going to be when Jesus comes back on a cloud, he's going to come back and he says in an instant, we shall become, we will be transformed from mortal to immortal, immortality with, with Jesus coming back, not because of genetics, not because of, of, of artificial intelligence or so immediately I understand that they're, they're way off. And that's the kind of discernment that I'm saying that every one of us as Christ followers need to have. When you hear something, check it with the Word of God. Know your Bible. Know what God's Word says. Know, you do need to know eschatology. You need to know the basics of it. You need to know what's, what is God trying to accomplish? What will He accomplish? Uh, there, there are signs that was given to us by Jesus, and God revealed to John 
in Revelation so that we could be aware. In fact, there's a blessing, the Bible says in Revelation, when you do study it. So I'm, I'm saying, yes, you need to study it. Just don't get hung up on missing the whole point of why you're yeah. studying and why God gave it to us. So that that is a good way that how you cannot walk in deception. Fact check what with what people are saying against what God has given us into in his word. Right. And the deception is what, what Satan is. I mean, he's a deceiver, you know, yep. it's, he's not obvious. Um, and, you know, like you said, there's only one way we're not going to be deceived and that's be in his word and be connected and understand yeah. his word and, and um, trying to do it any other way. I mean, I could right now try to put together a Bible study, go online and try to find all the, and I can find all kinds of things, you know, mm -hmm. and cut and paste. And, and if I'm not in tune with God and directing me for what this is supposed to be, yeah, it's like AI. I'm going to just put together what I think looks good and, and, right. and it's not of God, you know? So th I think that's where the deception comes. That's Satan, how cult knows, Satan knows his will. It's not, that's a, how, that's it's right. not a secret to him. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's right. That's how a lot of cults were found. Yeah. They were discovered or created out of, bits of truth mixed with lies and deception or twisting the scripture or the truth. Yeah. And uh, so cults were even found that way. So you're right. I mean, um, and I think that's why the power of the whole, that's why the Holy spirit is being given to us. So we would not be deceived. Right. Uh, and that is the Holy spirit needs to be your friend that you live with every day that you allow him to pray through you, speak to you, talk to you, lead you, guide you, help you understand the word of God. People telling me that, I can't understand the word of God. You were, you were not going to be able to stand, understand all of the word of God without the teacher of the Holy Spirit as our teacher. That's good. Yeah. You can't, you can't do it. That's and good. And if you do it yeah. outside of his teaching, you're going to form a cult too. <laughs> yeah. You're going to twist the scriptures. You, we need the Holy Spirit to reveal to us uh, God's word. And we rely on him, not on our, uh, not on our, degrees not in our knowledge not in our intelligence it's it is god it's the holy his holy spirit that gives us revelation of what is happening um in the old testament it was uh i forget the son's name but it, the title was given they understood the signs of the time they understood what was happening in their time frame and that was given to them by god it was his holy spirit that was helping them re reveal to them what was happening in their time frame? It's scary to see all these things happening at such a faster pace than you could imagine. But on the mm -hmm. other hand, it's it's understanding that this fulfillment of scriptures is just another um, sign that God is real and that you know He doesn't lie, and mm -hmm. um, we can't twist his, the truth of what He's saying. We want right. to, right? We want to be like God. That's the that's our fallen nature. We mm -hmm. we want to be. God created as for as incredible beings to serve Him to, for His joy, for His glory, right? Yeah, right. And I, I guess everything we need to think about is: Does this glorify God? Right. So I can create an AI perfect pastor. I think you talked about <laughs> that. You know, a guy that's very, you know, um, able to convince someone more than any human can. You know, yeah. That, They've already tried it, by the program. way. Yeah, <laughs> you can look. You can find it on YouTube. It, great <laughs> it's, it's hilarious yeah it's it's amazing what yeah you know what they're doing with this and those are going to be the thoughts and the ideas of trying to create a perfect human being um i believe and, the holy spirit though will give us that revelation of whenever there's something that's not true and, yes. and i think if you're not in tune with the holy spirit we can easily even like i said even the like could be deceived so that's a good connection paul so how do we connect what's going on now with mm. AI or to our series of life is better connected? Yeah. Look at look at how we were taught how to study the word of God in the book of Acts as an early church, that we were to do that in groups. Why? So that you're not don't take my word for 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 why we should be concerned about AI. You go do your own research. You read your Bible. You do it. And when we come together in, as in groups, as the body of Christ, uh, we learn from each other. We keep ourselves accountable to one another, right? This accountability. How, yeah. As a pastor, you're not just taking everything that I preach every Sunday or and just believing it. I hope that you don't do that. Just, I mean, I want you to agree with me. And if you do, if it, if it makes sense, if it's 
it not just makes sense, but if it's in line with the Bible, then yeah, let's let's run full full steam ahead. But there right. should be a uh, checking: is is this lining up with the Word of God? All of us need this. You need it. Yeah. You, as a believer, you need it too. Absolutely. And I'm probably there to help you to say, hey, you're wrong on that. And we need that kind of accountability. So that is why we got to stay connected. We learn and we grow in our faith by being in group studies. This was this was a big part of how the early church did it in the book of Acts. It's not just showing up to your uh, one hour, two hour worship service and, you know, however you worship, kicking your shoes off and just sitting, soaking in the presence of God. A great, do that. But you also need a Bible study. You need to sit down with somebody to unpack the word of God with you. You need discipleship. I don't care how long you've been saved. Amen. <laughs> so that that is life is better connected. And yeah. and so you're going to see advancing of technology, try to break down connections and even change your, your beliefs or distort your beliefs. But know your word of God. The connecting of the church of fellow believers. Yeah. Is it kind of what it's all about, isn't it? I mean, it, it, we're, yeah. we're a church, yeah. we're a body of Christ. Man, I felt this so strongly at the conclusion of the sermon that the gifts of the Holy Spirit uh, moves between um, humans that God created, not robots, not artificial intelligence. You're not going to find the gifts of the Spirit no. in transhumans, right? No. <laughs> Man made devices or man-made humans, that's not where the Holy, you're not going to find that. It's not going to happen. Um, I, I quoted, I quoted um, a philosopher. I, I love the quote. Um, Martin Buber, I think that's how you say his name. He was an Austrian, Jewish, and Israeli philosopher. And um, this was back, I think he his time frame was in eight, late 1800s, I believe, um, 1900s early. He says, when two people, and he had a lot, he taught a lot about relationships and had a lot of philosophy and teachings about relationships. But he says, when two people relate to each other authentically and humanly, again, 1800s, he's not trying to draw a case today. This was 1800s. I believe he was prophetically even speaking with this quote. When two people relate to each other authentically and humanly, God is the electricity that surges between them. There is a connection between us as humans, the gifts of the spirit, that's God, but they don't flow with, with people without souls, people that have not, uh, that are not human. Human beings have the electricity of God, the spirit of God flowing, the presence of God flowing between us as we connect, as we relate to each other. And that totally separates us from the animals. And I do believe, just so you know, I believe that yes, there will be animals in heaven. I believe that all my heart, (laughs) I see that. Yeah. But, but it's still, we are, um, we are created, uh, beings by God and we're the only ones. Animals was not created in the image of God. I, I think as we talk, um, God just kind of illuminates things and there going to be something that's going to be whoever's watching this later, um, might get, have a, a revelation from God that they want to share as they, sure. as they ponder on what we're talking about. Absolutely. I just want my kind of my thoughts here as we close this mm-hmm. one out, uh, this podcast. Um, there's a couple of takeaways here, guys. I think w- what is our take takeaway for us? I think number one is we need to find out what the Bible says. I, I think we need to continue to be students of the word of God. I need to go back and refresh my eschatology. Uh, it's been years since I wrote theses on Ezekiel and Daniel, uh, but I need to go back and brush up on eschatology, on what does Jesus want me to know about the end times. So I think we need to find out what the Bible says and keep be students about um, how to treat each other, how to relate to one another, how to be connected. I think there needs to be a big intentional effort that we do our best to connect why is it that there's so much anxiety, social anxiety today? Have we thought about this? Think about it. Why is it? Is this, is this an, an attack of Satan to, again, break our connections down, that there's so much social anxiety? But can the Holy Spirit, I believe he can, give us the ability to do what he's asked us to do, and that is to connect with one another and let God flow between us? Um, so find out what the Bible says. Number two is find out 
what in the world is going on? Fine. I mean, now this is going to be very hard because we are living in the age of deception. You're going to have, you cannot just grab a TikTok reel and run with a belief. You can't do that. You can't just grab a Google, a Google something and ask chat GPT four or five to give you research. You're going to have to do research upon research and dig deep and ask the Holy Spirit to show you uh, what in the world is going on. And I believe, again, because we have the Holy Spirit, He will lead us. The Bible says, this is a truth from Jesus, the Holy Spirit will lead you into all truth. You need to stand on that. I will not be deceived. Uh, I will not allow deception uh, to pull me away from God, to pull me away from people, to pull me away from my faith, what I believe in. Uh, and I'm going to allow God to continue to give me fresh word, fresh revelation on what in the world is going on in our world today. I'll give you my example. Tuesday, instead of just doing your stinking routines every day, every day, listen to the Holy Spirit. Tuesdays, instead of me just falling into my routine, I'm listening. God, where do you want me to go? What do you want me to preach to our people? What do you want? What lesson do you have for us? And not just falling into a routine and grabbing something and running with it. It's, it's following, being led by the Holy Spirit. And I think that's a big takeaway for us is find out what's going on in the world and be led by the truth of the Holy Spirit. And remember what Jesus said, as in the days of Noah, uh, there is going to be this emergence of, of deception, of transhuman, all of this stuff uh, is going to happen as it was in the days of Noah. You know what I would do? I would go back and read what happened in the days of Noah. Look what was, was happening there. Yeah. <laughs> go back and read it and refresh that and, yeah. and see if you can't line up with what is happening in our culture, culture in our yeah. world today. Um, so don't forget that. Fourthly is that the age of deceit that, that Jesus said it. I didn't say it. Jesus said even the very elect will be deceived. Paul said, Paul said this too. He said um, that they will be giving over to the lie. What is the lie? Um, there's a lot of lies. I'm, I'm, I can't tell you what that the lie is right now, but I can just tell you it could be the lie of God is the creator of the universe. It could be the lie of Jesus is coming back. It could be the lie that this is our God. This is our answer, technology, whatever it is. But Paul did say in the, in the end time, they will be giving, given over to the lie. Uh, so, and lastly, Paul, I just want us to focus on this. Listen, God has a next chapter. <laughs> God has a next chapter. Mm. And we are, we are, we are turning the page and we are plunging into the next chapter that God has. And there ain't nothing you can do to stop it. The next chapter is coming. And I don't know why I said Sunday, I said nine, you may, some of you may think that this is not relevant to you or to us. But I said it and I felt, I just felt this urgency of the Holy Spirit. I could be wrong. I could be missing. All right. But I felt it, Paul. I said, nine months from now, you're going to look back at this sermon and it's going to connect and relate more than you ever thought it could. And I don't know what that means. I don't know what's coming nine months from now. I'm just telling you, I do know this with knowledge increasing every 12 hours, we're going to see more of this and we need to be ready. Be ready. And that's exactly why we need to pray as believers for each other. We need to pray for you, Pastor, so that, Amen. as you said on Tuesday, God, the Holy Spirit directed you out of your routine, um, that you, you know, that you stay, you're a human, you know. Um, Absolutely. And that, you know, we pray for you to, to receive the word of God and, and, and pray for each other. Amen. Uh, because, yeah, we can, we can easily be deceived. Um, yeah. It's a narrow path, right? I mean, it's... He said it's 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 a narrow path. It's not Absolutely. a wide yep. path. It's a narrow path. So that means I know I'm a trail runner, right? So I know if I'm not paying attention, yeah, you, you get know, hurt. I'm going to fall on my face or go off the trail and right. fall off the, you know cliff or whatever. You know, that's it's like good, Paul. Yeah, narrow you're right. Path. Watch the feet in front of you, but also look at the road down ahead too. Don't be looking at the feet in front of you so much that you forget what's in front of you. You know, farther that's good. down the road. That's good. That's um, a very good analogy. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. It just came to me. Yeah. But, it's yeah, it's, uh, but yeah. So I love this conversation. I love the whole idea that we are connecting, even if it's, this isn't AI, this is really pastor Shannon and it's really me, but <laughs> right. Right. But that, that we are, we can use technology for, for good as well. I mean, um, absolutely. The important part is that we're connected with the Holy spirit and he'll tell us when things aren't, aren't right and where we need to put boundaries on it. 
And it may be that we, we, we have no control on what five people at Silicon Valley are doing with AI mm. right now. Mm. We as con- Christians can decide whether we're going to join it or not. That's right. And that could be part of the end times where, with the mark of the beast. You know, if we receive something, it's going to be helpful to us, you know, like economy or being able to buy. We may, we're going to probably face a lot of distress if we're still here. I'm hoping right. we're tripped out by them. But <laughs> um, yeah. But still, it's a, it's it's an amazing conversation. And and again, guys, keep your comments. You know, put them down there at the bottom. We, we'll definitely look at them. It, that, that's the whole point of what we're doing here. We want to deep dive into the sermon. Something you can't do on Sunday because it's kind of a one way street. But this is everybody's chance now to just jo- join in and yeah. and uh, just you know, it, nothing's too bizarre or out of the way. Just whatever questions you might have, we may not have the answers, but certainly you can find them. Uh, we will. Together, we can find them. Um, yeah, you're going to be on a missions trip. So, what's going on next week? Yeah, Puerto Rico. I'll be on a missions trip. I think we're building a, a community center for a local church ministry there. And uh, Bonnie, uh, my wife, Pastor Bonnie, will be preaching. She has a great word for uh, our whole congregation. And of course, we're going to honor our mothers on Mother's Day. So, we're excited about that. Uh, so, uh, next week, uh, we're trying to figure out. I've talked to Bonnie about how we want to do next week's podcast. And so we'll figure that out and we'll come up with a plan, Paul. Either uh, we may have to pre-record that one too. Bonnie will actually be after church. I think on Monday she's visiting her sister. It's her birthday this month. So she's spending some time celebrating. Um, But she may, I don't know if you can do this through, if she can do it through her phone that you may be able to. Sure. Yeah. She can do it through her phone. Yeah. Yeah. So she can connect with you through maybe the phone and, and do that. So we'll, we'll figure it out, Paul. And great. Yeah. You know, we'll, we'll connect, we'll make sure we're still connecting with everyone. So, well, great. And we'll be praying for your, your all's trip down to Puerto Rico. Yes, that, please. Uh, everything is smooth. And, um, yeah. and again, you're going to be watching this. It's not live, but, uh, possibly next week we, we, we could be pre-recorded as well, but you know, our, our goal is to eventually, we're just going to keep it live so that we can answer your comments as we're doing it. Absolutely. So definitely still leave your comments. Thanks for joining us, everyone. Uh, thank you, pastor. Again, yeah, thank you, Paul. Great deep dive we had, and we'll see you next week. Yep. Thank you.